that's exactly the spirit of wood firing <laughs> right. is um, bringing people together. And mm -hmm. that's another reason, a big reason that we decided to build this kiln is that we realized we could easily hold up just the two of us, you know, making pottery for the next 40 years. And we were like, well, if we build this kiln that's bigger than us, we can invite people to be a part of it. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, literal, but also just like on a bigger level. It's Welcome back everyone. I'm Sarah Scully and I'm here at the Two Potters Studio in Bethel, Vermont with Becca Webb, half of the husband and wife team of Two Potters. Thanks for being with me today, Becca. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, so uh, I first found out about you guys, I, I think either through a, a friend or maybe a really small local craft show. I can't mm -hmm. remember, but it was a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, and I've always been an admirer of your work. I have, I do have a couple of their pieces, just full disclosure. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to find out more about how you guys got started um, in your in your craft. So, um, how did you first get started with pottery? Um, so in high school, nothing mm. really glamorous. Just mm -hmm. you know, high school wheel throwing class. Um, lots of free study halls from in the studio um, and I went off to college and uh, ended up taking ceramics classes there and majored in art mm -hmm. um, and Nathan the other half of two potters um, had the similar similar start um, mm -hmm. and after college we took different paths didn't know each other yet of course um, <laughs> but he did production pottery so he um, threw around the country at different um, larger companies um and then I went into my own studio after college and um, okay. had sort of a uh self-taught path a little mm -hmm. bit more um so yeah and uh we met in 2008 and we were oh getting off topic no no that's that <laughs> I was gonna ask you how you guys like yeah. whether you were in college together in the same program and just continued no, or met no, later we so. a little age difference between us but it, uh -huh. um so we didn't know each other um we were living I was living in New Hampshire and he was living here at this homestead in Vermont mm -hmm. um and uh, I got a call one day in the pottery studio um, saying, this is Nathan Webb, would you be interested in teaching a pottery workshop um, oh. at the League of New Hampshire Craftsman Studio in Hanover? And I oh, said, okay. I said, well, at first, actually, I didn't pick up the phone. It took about a week to connect. But <laughs> once I actually called him back, <laughs> we got on the phone and um, hit it off on the telephone. So we set up the workshop and then we talked for another two hours. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was very fun. So so we set up our own blind date and um, mm -hmm. the rest is history as they say. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, I didn't realize it had been quite that recent. Yeah, um, ten years. About ten years ago. We, yeah. yeah, about ten years ago. And um, mm -hmm. pretty quickly after that we started um, we decided we wanted to be together and build this pottery business together. So mm -hmm. um, we started collecting bricks and things to build our kiln. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah. That's great. So yeah, so I was going to ask you about the kiln. Um, you just posted a, a kind of anniversary shot on your beautiful Instagram feed. Um, you and Nate posing in front of your newly created wood kiln. Um, so what inspired you guys? So it seems to me that wood firing is the more risky and the more sort of yeah. difficult way to do <laughs> kiln fired. So what inspired you guys to, to take that on? Yeah, so we had both had experience with wood. Um, mm -hmm. We just love the process mm. and, um, you know, living in Vermont, the fuel sources are readily available, you know, mm -hmm. actually our, our wood source for the kiln is just a few miles, probably close, close to your house on, on Route 14. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, we get slabs dropped off and we process those. So, you know, there is abundant fuel. We mm -hmm. love the aesthetics of it. Um, mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, wood firing is different in that. You know, it's, it's obviously a source of heat to melt whatever glazes we're using, but it's also when we fire for four days, which we do, it's a source of um, aesthetic of, of wood ash. So we're relying on the mm. buildup of um, over four quarts of burning wood, that ash landing on the surface of our pieces and creating a natural glaze. Okay. So, in fact, the one mug I'm holding... This yeah. is for warmth as well as for aesthetics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the um, this one doesn't have any glaze on it at all. So oh, okay. this went into the kiln just um, 
I'm very clay. And yeah, uh, hold it up to yep, the so little closer. Yeah. See the little birds and all the, the caramel colors. And it's matte on one side and yeah. shiny on the other. Yeah, so these pots really tell a story of the firing process. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we loved about it is that, um, you know, we were relying on our skills, but more the kiln and the unpredictability of um, what comes out of the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was really appealing to us. Mm -hmm. We, um, as I said, I'd had about five years of experience with it. And Nathan had taught classes and built a wood kiln. And so we pretty quickly decided that's what we wanted to do. We didn't mm -hmm. love the idea of, you know, trucking in propane or um, yep. using a lot of electricity to make our work. So it feels very involved. It's mm -hmm. very, uh, the process is just really, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, like ageless time you know when you're mm -hmm. around the wood kiln you sort of feel like you you know people have been doing this for thousands and thousands of years so yeah. there's something very connected about it and yeah. um, you know you don't just program the kiln and walk away which, right which on some days we wish we right. could do but <laughs> most of the time Beep, boop, probably yeah, comes out <laughs> we're pretty glad about it right <laughs> So. But it's more so. Do you have to tend it a bit during that four days? Make sure it's yes. still firing correctly. And, yeah. yeah, it's quite so a bit like maple sugaring in mm -hmm. that you know it requires constant attention. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to have someone at the kiln twenty four hours a day. So wow, ninety six hours. We mm -hmm. and that so we bring a crew of friends in mm -hmm. to help us out. Mm -hmm. um, so we can sleep and do it ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> although the first firing we did um, ourselves, which. Uh, just six hours on and six hours off, and uh -huh. we did that for four days. We were tired, <laughs> <I> but <bet. laughs> um, it's not similar to having young children. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're exactly. like oh, it's down for a nap. I'm going to take a nap too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, so so lots of help during the actual firing, mm -hmm. lots of yep. um, stoking. I mean, it's five to ten minutes. Every five to ten minutes, you're putting a piece in the kiln, a piece wow. of wood in the kiln, right. um, and towards the end, you know, the kiln is white hot and it's glowing and you really want to have, like, someone there to open the door and make mm -hmm. it all very efficient. And mm -hmm. then we do side stoking, which is along the length of the kiln. Um, I should mention, and I'm sure Cheryl, Sarah will share photos, but it's about 30 feet long. So mm -hmm. um, there's sections of the kiln that get wood um, inserted from the side. And so mm -hmm. we need a lot of help with So you that. get even heat along the, the whole yep. range of it or the whole sides of it. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. We bring ash towards the you know the back mm -hmm. parts of the kiln too yeah so very interesting yeah. yeah yeah i'd love to come up for a day if you don't mind a looky loo yeah one absolutely. of the days and just pop my head in yeah yeah we um <laughs> we love to, to do that we we always invite people to bring soup and drink mm -hmm. no i'm just yeah. kidding yeah. 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 hey beer um. or homemade yeah. soup whatever exactly <laughs> or something cold maybe because yeah. you're hanging out by the hot kiln yeah it's lemonade it's, you know, and also something. like that's exactly <laughs> the spirit of wood firing right is um bringing people together, and mm -hmm. that's another reason, a big reason that we decided to build this kiln is that we realized we could easily hold up just the two of us, you know, making pottery for the next 40 years, and we were like, well, if we build this kiln that's bigger than us, we can invite people to be a part of it, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, literal, but also just, like, on a bigger level, it's right. like... Um, the community that grows mm -hmm. around a kiln like this is really special. And we've met some people that, you know, we not, wouldn't have met any other way and that mm -hmm. help us out. And, you know, so so the motto we use for that is that those folks will put um, their own pottery into the kiln mm -hmm. and in exchange for their labor. So oh, um, nice. the kiln is actually filled with, you know, the work of five yeah. to six different potters oh, that's during very the firing. Cool. Yeah, that's, so I didn't realize really, that. That's very generous of you to make space cool. for other people's work. Well, it's yeah. essential for us. You know, it's like yeah. we really, we need the help and we yeah. love the community that develops around it. It's like some of our best friends. You yeah, know, that's, our, that's our really group. cool. Yeah, it's really cool. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, pottery family. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Um, I wanted to talk, uh, well, I should mention at this point, actually, I was going to say this um, at some point. Um, so you're, we're in Bethel, Vermont, which is the town next to Tunbridge where I live. And it's just north of Royalton where the tours are going to take place. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't have a formal event planned yet, but, um, with Becca, but, uh, we are going to have some time off during the tour. So mm -hmm. people will be able to come up and see you and see the, the pottery studio and the kiln if they're interested. Yeah. Um, on yeah. one of our programs. Yeah, we do. close by. I'll mention, yeah, it's kind of. 
the way we do visitors and stuff, you know, will work out with mm-hmm. Sarah. But um, in general, if folks are interested in visiting, we do kind of like by appointment through our website. There's mm-hmm. an easy form you can fill out letting us know when you're in Vermont if you want to come and visit. Um, and we'll set up a time. And we're all yeah. almost always here working. We just like to know when people are coming yeah, for sure. now. But we are, and we do open studio events. So that mm-hmm. would be one or two times a year um, mm-hmm. announced through our website or social media platforms, which is yeah. at Two Potters. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll link and, to uh, everything yeah. uh, in the show notes for this episode. Okay. People can find you that way. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, we'll announce the you know kiln openings we um, have done with a lot of success and a lot of fun. We'll have a band come and have mm. food and mm-hmm. music out under the kiln barn. And so, if we unload a fresh kiln load, we'll have people can come and choose right from the kiln. So oh, nice. That's something First we're dibs. hoping to do yeah. more. Of. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. really it's fun for everybody. Um, and then we may or may not move towards, um, you know, having a regular day of the week or a couple of days a month that we're open for kiln tours. So mm-hmm. I'll announce that through social media and we'll let you know. Too. Okay, cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about your um, designs and how mm-hmm. you come up with your forms. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Like, how do you, how do you pick um, what kinds of pieces you're going to make and then also what shapes you're going to make? Um, cause you yeah. do, you do a lot of tableware, mm-hmm. but you do quite a bit of kitchenware. Yeah. Um, which not all, you know, there's quite a few potteries in this area in, mm-hmm. in Vermont, New Hampshire. And a lot of people just do the symbols and coffee cups, mm-hmm. and, which I'm very much appreciating yeah. my teacup right now, <laughs> <laughs> a little hot tea, but, um, how do you, how do you decide what to, what to do? What inspires you to, um, it's been an evolution mm-hmm. when Nathan and I got together, obviously we both had you know, forms that we were each making and I had, I was running my own pottery business at the time. So we, um, we worked out what we joked about. It's so silly, but it's called unified booth theory. And we were, mm. <laughs> the idea just being that let's try to show together in a booth and like yeah. have our work complement each other, but mm. you know, mm-hmm. some overlaps, but anyway, so we worked out like Nathan's, um, throws beautiful pitcher forms, mm-hmm. um, and um, larger pieces, he throws fermenting cracks. Um, I make a, he makes a lot of mugs. He makes these round mugs. I do the bird stamps. Um, as for like how we arrived at our forms, I would say just um, you know over time they become mm-hmm. favorite forms. We tweak them to become more useful, but generally we really want things to be um, user friendly. I know mm-hmm. that sounds kind of strange, but we're always thinking about. You know, these round mugs, for example, sit really well in our hands, and you kind of cradle mm-hmm. them. And Yeah, it um, reminds me of um, Japanese tea bowls, which mm-hmm. wouldn't have a handle on them, but it's, exactly. it's just like the bottom right. uh, two-thirds of this, and you would have a bowl of tea, yeah. and it's so nice on a cold day. So nice, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're inspired a lot by, like, how pieces are used and how, um, you know, how we want to use pieces in our kitchen, so... Mm-hmm. Our customers also bring our customers and friends, which I call frustumers. <laughs> the dumbest word. But I've been trying to figure out a better word to say, like, if you're a customer and a friend, what are you? So our frustumers come <laughs> to us and, um, no, but seriously, they, they have really cool ideas. So I've had over the last few years, people be like, you know, I really want to make sauerkraut and I need a big crock. And this is, this is the design that would be great if there could be a weight that would hold down so, you know, so I don't have to go searching for a rock, to, you know, to hold my sauerkraut down in the brine. So out of that conversation, we developed our fermenting cracks, which mm-hmm. double as um, canister jars. And, um, and then another friend was like, uh, you know, I really want to have a jar for my... Um, uh, sourdough starter mm-hmm. and she's like I love your mason jar shape can you make that with a lid and I was like oh wow you know obviously I call it a mason jar but it's never been made with a lid it's mm-hmm. you know similar to the ball jar shape mm-hmm. um so I developed the lidded mason jar out of that conversation and mm-hmm. you know she got the first prototype and then after that it's been really popular so um different yeah. ways but a lot of ideas from people that use our stuff regularly mm-hmm. um and I'll have places in my kitchen where I'm like, you know, I need a little food prep bowl for, um, or that would also double as like a great snack bowl for my kids. Or mm-hmm. so those are kind of ways yeah. we get inspiration. Something small and portable or something big and heavy that can hold yeah. up to whatever process you're doing or, yeah. 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 So, I was going to ask you about specifically about the fermentation jar because I've mm-hmm. seen that 
as a trend in cooking and yeah. home preparation is a lot more people are making kombucha and kefir mm-hmm. and sauerkraut and kimchi. Definitely. So I was yeah. Yeah, wondering about that. Is it this kind of like cooking trends might also influence Absolutely. what yeah. you're making? I was going to say like cooking trends and excuse me, local food trends and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, definitely. I, we, you know, at the time we started making the sauerkraut jars, we're, you know, sort of running blind. We didn't know that it would be such a big thing, but it mm-hmm. turns out it did coincide with a real big trend and um, foodie trend of, you know, mm-hmm. fermented foods being really good for you. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's been a kind of fun intersection to play with, especially in Vermont where I feel like we're, right in the heart of the local food movement yeah. like all yeah. the small farms that are here and mm-hmm. you know it just feels like everybody's come up with a really unique business and there's ways that we can sort of like intersect those right things. and I think a lot of the people that work a nine to five still appreciate being able to have that homemade food local food or something like kimchi or kombucha that they've made yeah themselves yeah I yeah so like scratch adds- cooking and that is still really popular here yeah Yeah. definitely and I think the handmade pieces just add to that sort Mm -hmm. of like I don't know I get a wonderful feeling out of preparing a meal for my family that's you know food that I knew who raised the chicken and who grew these vegetables and fermented this cabbage and then on top of that it served on our handmade dishes and Mm -hmm. that's just like another level of (laughs) a funny little side note my daughter the other day she said um so you know, like she was essentially asking, like she just assumed that everyone made their own dishes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it was just kind of a fun moment of like she's four, and I was like, right. Actually, it's her sort of experience. unusual, but yeah, yeah she just mm-hmm. thinks that everyone works at home at studio mm-hmm. and makes mm-hmm. their own dishes. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, well, it sort of used fun. to be that way, right? You'd have a yeah. you'd have a pottery in every village, and yeah, you would have mm-hmm. maybe not everybody would work at the pottery, but you would have access to local you know use local clay and absolutely yeah. all of that so yeah. yeah that's really neat yeah it's pretty feels pretty ancient I guess that was a word mm-hmm. I was looking for you know it's just part of a long mm-hmm. timeline of people that have made provided for themselves and mm-hmm. you know Nathan was like oh, in the apocalypse you know we'll be well prepared we can make our right. stoneware jars and you've got you've you got know, something you can barter <laughs> <water. laughs> Anyway. You broke your bread bowl, huh? Well, it'll cost you three steaks, and I'll make you a new one. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, uh, I always like to ask people, and we're still sort of at the beginning of the year, what big plans do you have for 2018 that you'd like to share? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. We, well, we're collaborating with um, a local restaurant, which is really fun. Mm. Um, Wild Roots is a local food very local food restaurant. Very local, that, very good, and we're going to be eating there, folks. If you come on any of our tours, <laughs> we're going to Wild Roots. It's going to be yeah. amazing. Yeah. So you you may very well be ordering, um, you know, a after dinner drink in a in a mug and a creamer or um, a special cocktail cup. Um, we're making for Ooh. them. So yeah, so there'll be fun mm-hmm. kind of um, joint project with them to yeah. eventually fill out their restaurant with um, mm-hmm. handmade pieces. Mm, um, nice. Yeah, and we're brainstorming about new forms that we want to make. Um, we'll be doing a large craft fair in August um, mm-hmm. uh, in New Hampshire, so that's always kind of a focal point of our year. Um, yeah, remind me of the name of that group again. It's it's New Hampshire the, League. Yeah, League of New Hampshire Craftsmen, um, mm-hmm. who invites into their fold like members that are within a certain distance from the border of New Hampshire, essentially. So mm-hmm. that's how mm-hmm. in Vermont we're able to participate <laughs> right. in that. Um, so we'll be at that fair, um, and working towards that. We hope to fire two times this year. I mm-hmm. should have mentioned that's part of our wood firing. We're, you know, being such an involved process, it takes us several months to fill the kiln, mm-hmm. um, and then a whole month to complete the firing cycle in that, you know, it's a couple weeks to load everything into the kiln, um, and then, uh, a week or four days to fire it and mm-hmm. it takes about a week to cool down mm-hmm. so before we can even see what we've made we have to wait a whole <laughs> week and then the unloading process and sort of going through all the work and taking inventory of what we've made right um so that that's a whole other month so oftentimes we'll only end up firing once a year uh-huh. um and then ideally we'll be firing twice this year so that's mm-hmm. kind of our big goal this year yeah um plus a home renovation but you know septic project Right, little things. <laughs> no 
<laughs> no big deal. <laughs> and so you're firing again in February? Is that um, right? Ideally, April. Or April, Because okay. it's going to be, you yeah. know, the whole process of loading the kiln is... Um, would be cold. <laughs> yes. There's the whole the kiln itself, the firing itself would would be fine. Um, mm-hmm. The ambient temperature, you know, of fifty degrees, not being, or I should say, fifty degrees different than what we would fire in the summer. And it's not that that big a deal when you're talking about like two thousand mm-hmm. three hundred degrees as the mm-hmm. final goal. But it's just it's the comfort and the workability of the the loading itself, that process. You yeah. Know, if yep. the glazes are still damp, or if mm-hmm. um, you know everything we fire. If you can see, but on the bottom of every piece is three little pieces of um, a special kind of clay that keeps things from fusing to the shell. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have just, to stick those on. Yeah, yeah, everything gets glued on the <laughs> bottom. So, you know, 800 pieces times three to five or however many balls of clay they get. So it takes a while and mm-hmm. it would be very chilly. So anyway, a long way of saying hopefully when the weather warms a little mm-hmm. bit in April we'll be firing. Yeah. Yeah, I like how seasonal it is. I know a, a glass a local glass blower, and she works during the cold months because mm-hmm. her yeah. her furnace is so hot and she has such close contact with it. It's right. like impossible. Like if it's ninety yeah. degrees out, you don't want to be anywhere near that thing. Right. So yeah, you know she works all winter and then takes the summer off. So, Ideally, yeah. yes, I think that that would be nice. That somehow we always end up firing in July. <laughs> and we're like Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. And then, you know. we, well. Hot you get your and... crew, right? It's, all, it's always that, too. Right. It's like, when are people out. available? Yeah. What's convenient? But spring um, and fall is an ideal goal for us. Yeah. So I'm amazed, actually. I mean, you still have a lot from your last firing in the in the studio or the, the little shop that you have on your farm. Yeah, we do have um, a pretty good um, mm-hmm. inventory still of yeah. certain pieces, I should mm-hmm. say. So we did have a really... We had, our business has been growing. We had our best year ever last year, which mm. was really exciting. Thank Yay. you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like looking around. I'm like, okay, there's quite a few pictures, but I can tell what there isn't mm-hmm. here. You know, so those are the pieces that we're working on restocking now. Right. And right. some of the new things that we developed last year, like um, a handleless carafe, was a really popular form. And I should say also when we're developing a new form, it's kind of like you don't really know how it's going to go over, so we, I always hedge my bets and just make a few, and then inevitably the mm-hmm. new things are always snapped up quickly, and it's like, oh, I should have made, you know, five times that many, but right. that's kind of something we're just But it's a good way to test the market, time. and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and people can get stuff off online? Yeah. Uh, from you guys, too? Yep. We, um... So mm-hmm. our website links to our Etsy shop for okay. now. So you're um, on Etsy, yep. Yep, we're on Etsy. We have enjoyed being part of that platform it's been mm-hmm. pretty good for us we can ship boxes right from home which is nice for our mm-hmm. business um and we may eventually move to having shop directly on our website but for now it's on mm-hmm. etsy we also host wedding registries so those are you can okay. link to those on our website just to get an idea of um you know a wedding or gift registry we're actually doing a, a family registry this year which is fun they mm-hmm. you know they're already married they have a couple kids but they would really like to get rid of their corral or whatever they're mm-hmm. still using and yeah. so they've they're mm-hmm. gonna use it as a place to send family for gifts over you know the holidays and right stuff, so. over and, and you can do that over time so each yeah. every birthday every Christmas right. you might get a couple of pieces and then yeah, yeah build yeah. it up over time yeah I just I was I was at a dinner party at a friend's house and that's how she got her china set was it when she was in high school, she picked out her pattern, and her mom oh, bought her wow. like one piece every wow. birthday, every whatever. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> so it's a great way to build it up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, well, cool. um, what's I gonna say about that wedding registries? And oh, I was gonna say that the the online platform has just like been a really good push for me to um, work on my photography and mm. like get better at that. So yeah. Um, I love your photography. I love it. (laughs) It's so nicely. I mean, it's, it's presented in a way that it looks sophisticated and clean and beautiful, but it's still approachable. I don't look at your pictures and go, oh, I could never make my house look like that. Or, I, you know, oh, that's not my kitchen. You know? It <laughs> right. still, like, looks handmade and yeah. approachable and warm. That's so. a really nice compliment because I, I do sometimes lament the fact that I don't have, you know, like a um, really beautiful, <laughs> well, I love our house, but, you know, it's not like um, you wouldn't find it in a design magazine <laughs> in any sense of the word. It's so Vermont. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's an old house, but... It is, yeah, kind of our aesthetic is mm-hmm. a little more approachable. And that's, you know, we want these pieces to be used every day. They're not mm-hmm. meant to be, you know, on a shelf and mm-hmm. just for Gathering display. Like, yeah. yeah, ideally they're going to be used. Um, yep. 
Have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you again for joining yeah, me. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos. And um, you can find all of the links that we talked about, all the places to find Two Potters Pottery in the show notes for this episode. So <laughs> stay warm this winter. Get yourself some nice <laughs> handmade mug to put your tea in and, uh, and enjoy, folks. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>